Good day. Last video we set up Betaflight RPM filters for both BLHeli 32 ESCs on our Rattler build and also BLHeli S ESCs on our FlexRC Kalugo build. The Betaflight RPM filters were really easy to set up with three main steps and the detailed step-by-step -step checklist made available through the link in that video's description. I'll put a link for it down below in this video's description as well. We ended that video with a completed setup, but we didn't get the chance to actually see how the RPM filters worked. So today, we're going to do just that. Although I've flown both quads with the RPM filters engaged and they feel as though they fly amazingly, today we're going to take an objective look at the results of RPM filtering through our Black Box Explorer. This will not be a highly detailed in-depth Black Box analysis. Instead, I'm just going to take a quick look at the gyro traces and spectrograms of flights both with RPM filters engaged and without RPM filters engaged using our Rattler build with BLHeli 32 ESCs. If you'd like to see a similar video with the results of RPM filtering using JESC or Jazz Maverick on our FlexRC Kalugo with BLHeli S ESCs, just let me know in the comments section below. If you're ready to actually see graphically if RPM filters will work for you, then give this video a thumbs up below, share it with your friends, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel. Your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. For our flight without the RPM filters engaged, this is our configuration in the configuration tab. We're running D-Shot 600, 8K, 8K. The bi-directional D-Shot is toggled off. And we've got the dynamic filter toggled on. Our filter setup for our first flight without the RPM filters engaged is as depicted here. For our flight with the RPM filters engaged, this is our configuration setup. D-Shot 300, 4K, 4K, bi-directional D-Shot toggled on. Dynamic filter toggled on. The filter setup is as depicted here based on inputs from the Betaflight 4.1 tuning notes. Alright, now that you've seen both the configuration and the filter setup for without RPM filters and with RPM filters, before we get started I want to explain a little bit of what you're about to see. We've got all three axes on this display, roll, pitch, and yaw. This reddish color is the unfiltered gyro for each axis. So this, what I'm highlighting here is the unfiltered gyro trace for roll, unfiltered gyro trace for pitch, and unfiltered gyro trace for yaw. The other color is the gyro trace after filtering for roll, pitch, and yaw. Down here we have each of the motor traces. One, two, three, and four. Here you have your stick displays, throttle and yaw on left, pitch and roll on the right. Here you have your craft display. I've accomplished two flights. The first flight is without RPM filters engaged and the second flight is with RPM filters engaged. I'll go ahead and run through the first flight at full speed up until the end of our second maneuver. For each flight, both without and with RPM filters engaged, I've conducted two maneuvers. The first maneuver is a flip over the roof of my house, and the second maneuver is a roll over the roof of my house. So first, I'll run this first flight without RPM filters at full speed, just to show you what the flights look like. Then, following that, I will show you a side-by-side -side comparison of both the flip maneuver and the roll maneuver for without RPM filters engaged and with RPM filters engaged, so you get an idea of how the traces look for each side by side. Now what we're looking for here is the thickness of these lines. The thicker the lines, basically, the more noise. So we want as thin of lines as possible. Now having said that, I've made these look as bad as possible by turning on Expo. If I turn that off, they obviously look better. Turn it on, it looks worse. I've also turned off smoothing. If I turn on smoothing, these lines get really skinny. If I turn it off, they get more fuzzy. So I've made it look as bad as possible. I've also zoomed all the way out where that looks nice. That doesn't look so nice. So I've made it look 
as bad as possible just to highlight the differences. So let's go ahead and run this first at full speed and then we'll take a look at the side-by-side -side comparisons for without RPM filters and with RPM filters for both the flip and the roll maneuver. And then after that, we'll take a look at the side-by-side -side spectrograms for all four motors without RPM filtering engaged and with RPM filtering engaged. In the front, I'm gonna go around my front tree here and then I'm gonna flip over the house. And then I'm gonna go back to the front of the house go around the tree again, and then do the roll over the house. So that's what you're gonna see side by side, the flip and the roll for both without RPM filtering and with RPM filtering, except I'm gonna do it at 50% speed. All right, here we have the side-by-side -side comparison of the flip maneuver, both without RPM filters and with RPM filters. This top row is without RPM filters. The bottom row is with RPM filters. We can compare the gyro on the roll, pitch, and yaw, as well as all four motors for each when entering the flip in this column, mid-flip in the middle column, and exiting the flip in the last column. Keep in mind, we're looking for thinner lines. So having said that, which of these lines look like they're thinner or cleaner to you? Let's take a look at the roll. Here we have the same setup for the roll without RPM filters up top and with RPM filters at the bottom, entering the roll, mid roll, and exiting the roll. Once again, which of these lines look thinner and cleaner to you? Next, we'll look at a side-by-side -side comparison of motor noise for both without RPM filters and with RPM filters by taking a look at their spectrograms. All right, here we're gonna start taking a look at the spectrograms for each of the four motors, motors one, two, three, and four. These charts show you the amplitude of the signal and noise for each of the motors. This top row is each of the motors without RPM filters engaged, whereas this bottom row is with RPM filters engaged. I've chosen to look at all four motors as I'm entering each of the maneuvers, the flip, and also next we'll take a look at the roll. The reason I chose to look at the entering point of each of the maneuvers is that's when I'm increasing the throttle to accelerate over the roof of the house entering the maneuver. So if you compare this top row for each of the motors without RPM filters engaged to this bottom row with RPM filters engaged, which row, from your perspective, has less of this green stuff in it. This green stuff being the signal and noise on each of the motors. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the same thing for entering the roll maneuver. Here we're entering the roll maneuver, increasing throttle to accelerate over the roof of the house to enter the roll. Top row is without RPM filters, bottom row is with RPM filters. From your perspective, which of these rows has less green stuff in it? So now we've all actually seen through Black Box Explorer that Betaflight RPM filters actually do work. Let me know in the comments below what you now think of Betaflight RPM filtering and whether or not you'll implement it on your quads. For more free resources, make sure to check out my site at tmacfpv.com. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friends.